Hello, I'm Dr. John Iskander. Welcome to CDC Beyond the Data. I'm here today with Dr. Shantani Gamage, Associate Director for Infectious Diseases at the Veterans Health Administration. Welcome. Thank you. Um, at today's Public Health Grand Rounds, we heard from you and, and other experts mm -hmm. about the role of water management programs in preventing Legionnaire's disease. But let's, let's take a step back. What do we know about rates of Legionnaire's disease and about outbreaks? So what we know is that Legionnaire's disease, which is a type of pneumonia, and it can be a severe type of pneumonia, the rates have been increasing steadily in the United States, um, especially since the year 2000. And we've seen this steady increase um, across the country. And it's unclear exactly why that's happening, but there's a number of uh, aspects that could be leading to that increase. Um, Legionella is the causative agent of Legionnaire's disease. It's a bacteria that lives naturally in water. And people don't typically get sick from natural environments where, where Legionella live. However, when it, Legionella get into the water distribution systems of buildings, it can proliferate if conditions are conducive to its growth. So one thing that could be happening is there could just be more uh, Legionella types or amounts in water distribution systems and people are being exposed. Another thing that could be happening is that clinicians, doctors, um, providers are diagnosing the disease more. There's a specific test that will diagnose Legionnaire's disease as a type of pneumonia a person has. And as we become more and more aware of the problem of Legionnaire's disease, um, perhaps through education events, through large outbreaks that have occurred, clinicians will um, more and more use the diagnostic test to identify cases. Another thing that could be happening is that people are actually more susceptible. We have an aging population. There are more people on immunosuppressive drugs. And these types of conditions can make someone more at risk for cases. So it's a multifactorial process. And um, what we're seeing is that we can implement practices perhaps a little better to try to get these rising rates under control. So in multiple reasons for increasing cases. Yeah. Outbreaks frequently reported. Yes. Um, now, sometimes these outbreaks sort of um, sneak up, particularly on healthcare systems. I, I know yes. this is one of your areas of expertise. Yes. So one of the reasons that may happen is that, for one, these healthcare complexes are larger and larger buildings. There's an aging infrastructure there. Probably most importantly, these are buildings that house people who can have who can be very sick and have comorbidities or other conditions that could make them more susceptible to Legionnaire's disease. And so, um, in these settings, again, you know, with with high risk areas as well, such as transplant units, people who are quite at risk. Um, it is particularly important to have practices in place to know when there's an issue that could be happening, such as cases of Legionnaire's disease from your facility, and ongoing plans to prevent Legionella from growing in your water systems. So um, transitioning then to uh, uh, talking about prevention, mm -hmm. we, we know from investigation of many outbreaks that uh, water management programs can prevent the vast majority of Legionnaires' outbreaks. Yes. Uh, what has been the experience of the, the Veterans Health Administration in implementing this? The Veterans Health Administration, um, which has the largest integrated healthcare system in the U.S., we have healthcare facilities all across the country. Um, we recognize that our patient population can be in those high-risk categories. And so it is very important for us to have prevention, um, uh, prevention plans in place at each of our medical campuses. We've actually had Legionella prevention um, policies for decades, and it mostly centered around ha maintaining hot water temperatures in our buildings. But as we've learned more and more about practices that can be put in place that work together, um, we have embraced the concept of the water management plan that um, we talked about today at the Public Health Grand Rounds. Um, and so we do require that all of our healthcare buildings where patients or residents or visitors stay overnight have a comprehensive water management plan. I think one thing that um, can happen is 
facilities may not realize, and this is facilities in general, healthcare facilities, may not realize that healthcare associated cases are occurring. Unlike other healthcare associated infections or um, uh, where, where there's clinical management associated with you know, patient activities with preventing infections, um, these outbreaks are controlled and, and cases are controlled from engineering practices. Mm. And so it really requires a concerted effort from different entities in a healthcare facility, engineering facilities, management, clinical staff, infection prevention and control to come together um, to understand what is going on. So really a classic example of, of public health really requiring a multidisciplinary team and really going having to go outside of the, the public health and the healthcare sector Precisely. to uh, achieve that. So um, what results has uh, the VHA achieved um, through this ongoing water management strategy? The way we validate that our programs are working, that the engineering controls in place to control Legionella in our water systems is working, is through surveillance. Um, we do clinical surveillance, meaning we encourage clinicians to test patients who have pneumonia with the Legionella test, um, and then to determine if that case may have been associated with a health, their healthcare facility. The other thing that we do is we require quarterly testing of building water systems for Legionella as an indicator to see, are we keeping things in control? Identifying a case of Legionnaire's disease or identifying Legionella in the water are both indications that controls may need to be adjusted. So this is an ongoing program at our facilities on a routine basis to try to control this pathogen uh, in the environment. Uh, and in fact, you have achieved some uh, some successes, and I, I think our audience would be very interested in hearing about we have. a uh, success associated with the Veterans Health Administration. So, could you we would love to tell, tell us a little bit about that, please? <laughs> One of the things we implemented when this current policy came into effect five years ago is national surveillance systems to collect data on the numbers of cases of Legionnaire's disease in our healthcare system and also the amount of Legionella in the water system. Both of those have, uh, surveillance systems have shown success. When we looked at our uh, Legionnaire's disease data over time from 2014 to 2016, there were over 400 cases, almost 500 cases of Legionnaire's disease reported, over 90% were not associated with our healthcare facility. And the small number of cases that were potentially healthcare associated from overnight stay, that rate significantly decreased um, over that time period, which we think is the goal of a program like this, to have less and less people getting sick. We did interestingly notice an increase in non-VA cases, the community associated mm. cases, and this tracks with what the country is seeing, right? So. I think it speaks indirectly that taking actions, doing things, having a plan can actually have the outcome that you want. We see the same thing when we look at Legionella um, positivity in our water results. This is routine testing. This is not case investigation. This is just to see, are we controlling Legionella in our water systems? And we found that Legionella rates, uh, positivity in our water significantly decreased in a three year period. So we're reducing the risk and we're seeing less cases. So that really is a very uh, comprehensive, I would say, public health success story, both in terms of process and in terms of outcomes. So several yes. of our speakers today highlighted uh, resources, training materials mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. uh, healthcare or other facilities that want to have a water management program to yeah. prevent Legionella. What's a, a good place for people to go to find these resources? I think the CDC has excellent resources. The CDC website for um, Legionella uh, prevention, the Legionnaire's disease website. Um, it's a very complex issue to tackle. Um, if you think about how extensive the plumbing system is in some of these large medical campuses, um, trying to get water with the proper temperature, the proper biocide or chemical disinfectant level to the endpoints where people ex are exposed to the water can be a very challenging 
feat. And I would encourage people not to get discouraged and to think of it all as a, a, a we must do this right now type of approach and have it finished right now. Start your plans. Take your readings of, of your measurements in your water for temperature or whatever you decide to measure and see how things are going. The CDC has some excellent training materials, um, Prevent LD, for example, that can be helpful to get people started. Sometimes just getting the water safety team going in the group, mm. which is, which is um, the, the team that has engineers, facilities management, and clinical people um, on it is an incredible step to get people just talking about where do we need to focus in our building to help reduce rates. So really, uh, great, great and very practical advice. Yes. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I'm Dr. John Iskander. Please join us next time for Beyond the Data.